right, it's been a little while since I've done a little driving vlog. Today, my dad and I are going to the dump. So, let's get going to the dump. Now, as usual, this driving vlog will be unedited as to uh, keeping the spirit of driving. Um, and obviously this won't be called the drive home. This will be called drive to the dump or something to that effect. Um, as you can see, I have trash cans behind me and I'm driving my Ford F-250 XLT from 1992 that I did the carb swap on, which I have a video out there about. Anyway, shifting the second gear real quick. Um, here we go. My dad's truck's behind me. You can't see it though because of all the garbage cans that I have in the back. Um, so yeah, here we go to the dump. Um, if you've never been to a dump before, this might be very exciting to you or it might be very boring. Uh, I don't know you, so I can't really tell you what you like. Oh no! My truck died. Okay, here we go. There we go. Second gear. Third gear. You know, it's been a really weird winter up here in North Idaho. Uh, it's February and it is currently 41 degrees outside. That is unheard of. Um, let me turn off my JVC unit because it's connected by Bluetooth. Okay, there we go. Anyway, uh, usually in February it's like zero degrees. And this is the first year I've ever seen with any days in February that are uh, pretty much above freezing, so that's interesting. It's very weird, and this road is bumpy, as you might be able to tell. Ah! Stop sign, vehicle's passing. Driving in the country is a bit different than driving in the city. Of course, though, I prefer driving in the country. I don't know about other people. You know, the whole open road thing is just kind of nice. I prefer it a lot. Um, it's more peaceful. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll switch the camera around here you know, a little bit to show you the, the open road.
to sleep, you probably have 360 pounds or more sand in your bed. And, uh, you know, that would probably help you sleep at night. Maybe. But what if it doesn't? If sand does not help you sleep, then maybe you're a monster. If you're not a monster, then, well, then I would guess sand helps you sleep. And there you go. There's your philosophical thought of the day. If you are a monster, sand does not help you sleep. Ah, oh, man. So maybe I'll just stop rambling. Um, maybe. Maybe, maybe I will. Or maybe I won't. Uh, I really don't know what to talk about, so I've just been talking, and, you know, if you're still watching the video, kudos to you. Um, because this is probably very boring. Um, anyway, here's something about my truck. This morning, I, uh, adjusted the choke. If you don't know where the choke is, let me explain it to you real quick. So, in a carburetor, there's this thing called a choke. And the choke is this little valve, uh, well, I shouldn't say a little, it's probably the biggest valve in your entire engine. Um, it's roughly this big, and it's just a little flat, it goes like this. And what, it's, and what it does is it allows airflow through the carburetor. Okay, so when it's straight up and down like this, air goes in a lot easier. In fact, actually, a lot of air goes in very easy. But when it's closed, or slightly open, less air gets in. That's pretty easy to understand, right? Um, because it constricts the airflow or allows free airflow. Now, what the choke does is, it, what I just said, it, it helps control the mix of your engine uh, for your fuel and air. And that's very important, especially when you're starting your engine, because when it is cold, you require more fuel and less air so that your engine will start and run. So my choke was closed and then opening very fast. And I have an, uh, an electric choke. So it's, it's set, um, the electricity comes on and it heats up an element inside the choke cap. And then what happens is as that element heats up, there's this little spring that heats up and you know, that, that happens. But um, you can adjust that to where it opens faster or it opens slower. Mine was opening too fast. So I would get enough fuel to start the engine, but then if I didn't put gas into it afterwards, it would uh, bog down and just die um, quite easily. And so I moved it a couple notches back because I have a holly. And the way you adjust this is that if it's releasing too soon, then you move it counterclockwise. And if it's releasing too late, you move it clockwise. And so I moved it a couple notches counterclockwise, so towards the cab, and uh, it started up really easily, and I didn't really have to put any gas into it, so that was nice. So I adjusted the choke, and um, so now it will take longer to go from closed, so not really allowing any air in, to open, allowing lots of air in. And that's the motion that the choke does. It just does like this. And usually when you start it, it's not gonna be like completely closed. It's gonna be, it might be completely closed and then like that. And just a tiny bit of air to get in. That's, and that's what's needed. So, yeah. That's how a choke works, uh, or at least that choke. You have manual chokes as well, which you control via a cable that runs through your dashboard, through your firewall. Uh, and then you also have automatic chokes that you don't really find anywhere anymore unless they're on a really old carburetor. Um, and those are controlled by the temperature of your engine. And that's what heats up the element. Oh no, it is closed. So it looks like we're gonna have to go to the other dump. Anyway, longer video for you guys, I suppose. Maybe I will just um, turn the camera around. You guys can watch the road go by and I'll put some neat old music to it. So here we go.
long hair across the room Baby, she got that glow I know you see me over here So dance on me real slow We've been going for about two hours And I don't even know your name So baby, please reveal, reveal Your friends are calling you Okay, so now we have delivered our garbage to the dump and now it is time to head home. As you can see, I've emptied the garbage cans that were in the back of my pickup. Ah. 
Well, I'm having a hard time adjusting the seat. And we are about to pass my dad. As you will see here in my rear window. Maybe. You might be able to see. Oh, you can see the top of the cab. You know what? I quite like Bonnie's Ferry. I'm glad I moved back here. Maybe I'll retitle this video a drive through Bonner's Ferry because that seems to be what the majority of the video was. And now, up to a certain point, I will switch my camera back around so that you can enjoy um, the other direction. You might get to see into the valley a little bit better. So, here we go. you have it there's a nice drive through Bonner's Ferry um, now we're going up a hill back to my home um, and there you have it I hope you enjoyed that if anybody's watching this because they're interested in Bonner's Ferry you probably got a nice view of it if you bothered to sit through the whole thing I know it was really long um, but anyways the takeaways from this video is that Bonner's Ferry is a be very beautiful place and then also um, you're a monster if you don't like sand. Um, sand is very important. It should make everybody comfortable, no matter who you are or where you are. Uh, that's just something to, to remember there. Um, 
It's very important. Sand is very important. Actually, if you read the Bible, we're made from sand or, or dirt or whatever. Um, it, at least so the Bible says. Um, yeah. There you go. There's that. A little, little piece of information for you. The Bible says we're made from dirt. Um, so next time somebody calls you a bag of dirt, just say, hey, thank you. You know, you too. Um, you're also a bag of dirt. Thank you for acknowledging that. And uh, you, you can say that, and technically you can, you can just be thankful that they're recognizing the fact that you are, in fact, a bag of dirt. Um, also, another thing about Bonifrey, everybody waves you. So if people drive by, they're like, hey, or the, you know, the three-finger wave, or sometimes, you know, they have your just the two-finger wave, just like, bow, like that. So sometimes they do that. Um, but everybody waves, it's a very friendly community, uh, but there's also a lot of backstabbing. Um, people pretend to be your friend, which is why I don't have many friends, because I really, I don't want to pretend to be somebody's friend. Uh, so there is a lot of fakeness, I suppose. Um, but I mean, every place has fake people. When I lived in Spokane, almost everybody I met was a fake person. Some people really don't, but most of them not so much. But yeah down my window again. Mm. I like the sound of my engine. I think it sounds very nice. Now, as I come onto the straight stretch coming up here, um, I'm going to maybe put some gas into it. Like uh, right here. Maybe I'll only go 35. Yeah, I didn't really put any gas into it. Um, I'm sorry, folks. Maybe next time. But, uh... Sorry. I need a haircut. That's another thing you can take away from this. You're a bag of dirt. Vaughn is very beautiful. And I need a haircut. Actually, I need my hairs cut to all of them. So, there you go. There's some factual news for you. Oh, a little slushy. Did you hear that? Some slush there. Here comes my dad behind us. Anyway, I know I say anyway a lot, but there was a video. Hope, hope some people bothered to sit through the whole thing. Um, I know I probably would not because it's very long. But, uh... I thought that I did a good job. Now, excuse me. I'm going to back up now. Actually, I'm going to turn around trash pans in the back of my pickup. I want to offload them. Anyway, there you go. I think that's going to be the end of the video right there, right before I offload this. So, have a good day.